Hello guys, TechSnackles here, and today we've got here this Sony Xperia Z2 review. I've had the chance to play with it for a few weeks now and want to tell you all about my experience with it, the good and the bad, all in this review. So let's get started first with the design. When I first held this phone, I was quite impressed with the feel of it. I think that Sony really did a remarkable job designing uh, this phone, and it's really up there with uh, the best designed phones, also taking into consideration how light and slim it is for its size, and also how this phone is waterproof. On the side of the phone, as usual, for a 5-inch screen, you'll find the shiny power button that is easily noticeable and fits in nicely with the design although I found the volume up and down key to be located a bit lower than usual but something that you'll probably get uh, used to as you use the phone. The bad thing I found was the location of the out loud playing speaker which is located in an easily covered place by the hand meaning that while you're playing games uh, or watching videos you'll probably cover the speaker without meaning to which will not allow it to really play the sound out loud. Uh, the biggest thing you'll notice on this device is the screen, obviously, which is a huge 5-inch Full HD screen with a resolution of 1920 by 1080p, meaning it's obviously a Full HD, as I've said. Although it's a really beautiful display, due to the layers it's under to be uh, waterproof, it isn't able to really show its true colors and fails to be a big, impressive screen, but still is nice and above average compared to other smartphones. On the back, we've got one of the most important things in smartphones these days. It's the camera. And Sony packed this phone with a 13 megapixel camera that performs actually quite well and impressively under low light conditions and didn't fail to impress me. And on the front, you've got the other camera, which is a 2 megapixel camera that apparently takes um, 1080p video, so it should be more than good enough to Skype with. And a thing to add to the design, which won't, we won't probably talk with other phones, is that it is water proof and to make this able uh, and happen uh, Sony had to design this phone carefully and you'll obviously notice how they designed it to be waterproof as the uh, every port on this phone is um, like the headphone jack or the sim card installer are covered with the rubber thingies that and the co but the covers are really easy to snap out when you need them to and they easily blend in when you snap them back uh, with the device and uh, I found it actually quite hard to find I did not know where to plug as I do not read the instructions or anyone does these days I think it was quite I, I didn't I couldn't find the charging point for it the U, the mini USB connector but after a while I did notice a little flappy thing because it doesn't really indicate where it is at least I don't think so uh, with the review unit that I had and so I couldn't find it but then I found it and you'll get used to it you'll know where it is but it easily bends into the phone so you have no problem because you won't really notice that anything it just feels like a, there's no ports on the device whatsoever. So up next is performance and this phone is powered by 1.5 GHz quad-core Qualcomm processor which isn't very impressive in comparison to the recently announced Galaxy S4 with an octa-core processor. Although I still find quad-core smartphones ridiculous as you can't really use it to the fullest and really get those cores working hard. But although many people like to show off with specs, they aren't everything. I found this phone phone underperforming in comparison to other Android devices, even though Sony's Android skin is very minimalistic, especially in comparison to HTC Sense. And after installing some games and apps, uh, the phone started to lag a bit, that, uh, something that Project Butter is trying to avoid. And speaking of Project Butter, this phone has Android 4.1 Jelly been loaded, which is already outdated with Android 4.2. The phone performed reasonably well in games such as Wheel Racing or Subway Surf, which you should expect since it's powered by a quad-core processor, but nothing very different or quick uh, in comparison to an iPhone 5 that has a dual-core chip inside. But also, software in iPhone is built for the hardware it offers, while Android has a lot of you know fragmentation. Uh, Sony's Android skin is very minimalistic and really offers not many useful features, only a few tweaks. And as any Android device, it allows you to fully customize your device, something I would if I owned this device. Since the skin is not very un appealing to me and I don't actually find it very useful at all. And something we left behind is uh, very important, which is the call quality. Which until recently, the phones were all about calling until internet came to the phone. Again, there's nothing very impressive in call quality, just normal call quality as you should expect from a device that is this expensive and really there's nothing very impressive towards it or really important. 
Uh, the phone also packs LTE, which should make web browsing a delight. But unfortunately, quite a bit of the real estate of the phone is taken by um, the back home and multitask, uh, usual you know, Android keys that aren't implemented into the phone's design. Although with a 5-inch screen, you should have plenty of uh, room left to explore in the phone. And having a 5-inch full HD screen, you are sure. I'm sure you you want to watch uh, videos and. Um, and, uh, movies which are a great satisfaction the speaker was also uh, quite loud as I've told uh, in the design uh, review of the speaker isn't really very well located but it is still a loud speaker but nothing again very in impressive there for, uh, for in comparison for example the HTC's one dual speaker which I haven't tried but should deliver you quite good sound quality at least from early reviews uh, but it's still a great phone to watch movies or videos or play games, especially with this uh, ginormous screen. And talk about movies, you'll be able to store plenty of movies in a microSD card thanks to the microSD slot. But it's a bit disappointing that XBOZ only offers 16GB of integrated storage. Um, with so much uh, power in this device, you, you should be wondering the battery life. It has a big HD screen, it's a 5 inch big HD screen. So Sony made sure to pack a big battery inside to make sure you have plenty of juice to make your phone last at least a day and it didn't disappoint in my uh, testing. It did last a full day with a little bit of spare left, not much, about 20% or something like that. I did a normal day use of it, playing a few games, checking mail and Facebook and texting and calling. It lasted a full day with a little bit to spare, so nothing very uh, impressive there and a bit disappointing since it's uh, supposed to last you 11 hours of LTE uh, speaking time. So lastly, one of the most important things, my personal verdict of this phone, should you get it or not? Well, in my opinion, I don't think there's anything very appealing to the phone that sh should make you jump out of your seat and go and get it right now, especially at this time of this, the game where we are right now, this time of the year. New phones are being introduced, the Galaxy S4 was announced and the HTC One, look, these devices look awesome. I suggest if you're really in love with this uh, Sony Xperia Z, if you're really in love with it, you should test it out first, really see if this is what you want to get yourself into. Also iPhone 5S should be coming soon, but if you're really an Android fan, I suggest you go for and, and wait for the Galaxy S4 or test out HTC One really see if this is the device you want obviously don't just make any rational mistakes right now um, so basically there's nothing very impressive about this device it's basically just another phone it has quite nice specs to it but overall there's nothing very appealing to it waterproof is a nice feature but there's really nothing more than that offering offered here by Sony an ecosystem it was something I was going to talk about, but Sony is still working on that. There's nothing very on about the ecosystem of Sony. Unless you think I'm wrong, then do leave a comment down below so I can know. And also leave a comment down below something else you would like me to talk about this visor show. I will be doing a waterproof test very soon, so stay uh, up to date for that and subscribe for that. So... Basically, that's what I think. I don't think this is the device you should be getting right now this time of the year at the time this time so do wait for other devices and really see if you're really in love I, I do suggest you try it out maybe get it if you, you really like this is a five inch screen so it's really up there uh, with the what you so called phablets uh, maybe wait for the Galaxy Note 2 uh, Note 3 sorry um, if you really want a big screen phone or maybe get the Galaxy Note 2 try it out really test it out I don't think this is the best one out there right now so do try these first so thank you a lot for watching. This was the review of the Sony Xperia Z or Z, depending where you are. Um, if you would like to know anything more else about this device, do leave it in the comment section below. I'll try and check it out. Thank you a lot for watching. Subscribe for more. And this was Tech Snackles here with the Sony Xperia Z review.